Greetings, my name is Sterdin and I still have no idea how to start these videos. So let's not delay any further and get right into outgenshining the impacts today. So about 6,000 years ago, an adepti named Morax was born. What's an adepti, you ask? Well, it's basically a creature, animal, exceptionally wise toaster, whatever else, that reaches a state of enlightenment and becomes crazy good at everything. And Morax was the craziest and goodest of all the adepti, which made him kind of a big deal. So he was chillaxing up in his mountain one day when he suddenly noticed an absolute crap load of humans camping out on his front lawn. This made him a bit uncomfortable. So he did what any sane person would do and parted the seas in order to give the humans a place to stay that wasn't right outside of his door. Kind of. Here the people prospered for a while and life was good, but became even better when Morax met this nice lady called Guaizhong, who was the goddess of dust. No, I don't know who in her right mind prays to dust, put your hands down. And the two became very fast friends. And like good pals do, they decided to form a coalition of sorts which they named the Guili Assembly, so called by combining parts of their names. Morax had a million names over the years just go with it, like two very platonic pals do. But outside of their numerous implied romantic conquests, they actually had a pretty good thing going. So good, in fact, that many more adepti and smaller gods decided to join in as well, which made them do an even better job. So over time, with their economic state and their standards of living increasing, they slowly expanded north and Oh, it looks like the Divine Thunderdome known as the Archon War just begun and things get real messy real fast. Things get wrecked, people get killed and everyone was really sad. But hey, at least we still have each other Ra- Oh, Guajong's dead. Being platonically heartbroken and seeing things go south pretty fucking fast, Morax decided that it was time to get serious and he'd show all his poseurs what a real bloody god looked like. He founded this funny little place called Liri Harbor and entered into the Archon War ready to whoop ass and make sweet platonic love to Guaizhong, and he was all out of Guaizhongs. So there was lots of fighting, and lots of people got themselves promptly murdered. Morax went full Buffalo Bill and killed a crap load of nasty beasties, some goddess got shanked by her followers and was a tad salty about it, and it was overall just one big old mess of bad vibes. Or at least it was until Morax and his increasingly OP posse of divine little helpers yeeted some mountains at a big hydro hydra called Osile, definitely killing it and making all the other gods collectively crap their pants and nope out of there. Thus making Morax the one true god king of Liyue. Good stuff, right? Well, yes, but actually no. As is to be expected from a conflict that made the three kingdoms look like a joke, there were a lot of bad vibes floating around, which actually started manifesting and making people very bad, sad and acting like a twat. And as Morex just wanted to chill out and enjoy his victory without the echoes of his numerous war crimes following him around, he would get five of the strongest Yaksha, which are like Adepti but stronger and they get to wear cool spooky masks, and form the Good Vibes group, whose mission statement was to stop the vibes from getting too bad. Surprisingly, handling the karmic equivalent of nuclear waste was exactly good for you, and the members of the Good Vibes group began going completely batshit nutty muffins insane. Except for one, called Zhao, but nobody likes him, so we don't talk about him. Oh, and also one of Morax's BFFs, a title with a dubious track record, who's also a giant fat huge dragon called Ejdaha, went completely nuts as well and had to be locked up in order to prevent him from, you know, murdering everyone. By now, Morax was getting a bit tired of it all, and, noticing that he was about 5,935 years late in his retirement, quietly began making plans to writes that little wrong. Or at least he would have done, if one day some blonde little crop top wearing dipshit by name of Steve Wangchops hadn't wandered into Liyue Harbor to see him and Morax actually got so offended by his horrible choice of fashion that he has a heart attack and just sort of dies. This is obviously very bad and Steve is almost chased out of town by the local branch of the fashion police. They saved at the last moment by some friendly, innocent and totally trustworthy Fatoui Harbinger called Child, who is just here to help and only wants to see Morax's body to pay his respects and not Nothing else. But despite the assistance of everyone's favorite Russian ginger, Steve is still hunted by the authorities. Hope that doesn't become a trend in the future. And in order to prove his innocence, goes on a mighty quest to end all quests. He meets with Morax's old adaptive mates to talk about stuff, meets with this kind old funeral assistant called Zhong Li to talk about more stuff, and even meets with the big kahuna of Liu Wei, Ning Wang, to talk about even more stuff. And through the power of talking about stuff, they figured out that, whoa, the Fatui are actually evil and are trying to steal Morax's little chess piece thingy of power or something called a Gnosis. So Steve rushes over to where they're keeping Morax's body just in time to see Tagliatelle Adolescente. <laughs> 
trying to steal this little thingy of power. And Steve points his weapon at him and is all like, get on your knees. And ta ta taglia is all like, I'm not your sister last night, which Steve does not appreciate. And the two start duking it out. But since Steve has the cosmic powers of the protagonist on his side, it's a pretty one-sided match. And Mr. Sisterfucker gets completely bodied. But he's also kind of a massive sore loser about it. So he decides to release Osail, the big Hydro Hydra, that wasn't actually dead at all, to destroy Liyue, which he totally meant to do from the beginning. Shut up, you guys. I'm, I'm going home. So, a bit of a situation now. Giant Hydro Hydra Blizzard thing is about to flood Liyue and kill everyone. But wait, no, no, he isn't anymore. Because Ning Wang yeeted a building at him and he's totally dead this time. Definitely. Hooray! But, but, but what is this? Turns out that Zhong Li was actually Morax all along and he faked his death as part of that grand retirement plan to see if the people could handle things without the divine sugar daddy to take care of everything. And he's even made a deal with this one Fatui lady that kicked Fendi at one time, it was really funny, to hand over his little noses thingy anyway. W what? What? So they both clowned on child for a bit for being such a massive dum-dum. Zhong Li gave her the thingy and they all just kind of pissed off. Why did he agree to such a deal? Who knows, he signed an NDA or something and won't tell us. But none of that is important right now. For Liu Wei is entering a new era, one without a god watching over them and ruled by humans. The day is saved, peace is restored. And no seriously, where in the flying name of Celestia is my s-